Sharpo is by far the most versatile weapon for thieves, and that's why you see it in basically every build. However, it is a very difficult weapon to master, and therefore using it optimally can be sometimes very rare. So I'm going to show how the shortbow works, some of the mechanics that you can work around to optimize your gameplay, and some advanced techniques as well. The reason why Shortbow is so good is because the Thief Profession mechanic is initiative, which means that their weapon skills do not have cooldowns, and this allows them to use their skills how they wish as long as they have enough initiative to. And the Shortbow can do many things from AoE to burst damage to mobility to utility and evasion it just has so many things and you can choose which one you want and if you need a lot of that one thing you can keep getting that one thing and if you need some of everything then you can get some of that so the, the short bow has very high potential to do many things and isn't predictable because of how many things it can do which in pvp predictability is counterplayability before we get started, there are some settings that you need to enable in order to facilitate some of the things I'm going to teach you. So first of all, you want to go to uh, camera settings and enable camera teleportation. And what this will do is it'll allow you to immediately see your new surroundings whenever you teleport somewhere because your camera will immediately teleport somewhere as opposed to having a delay when you do not have that enabled. Also you want free camera which will allow you to more freely uh, see your surroundings independent of wherever your character is going. So it allows you to be a little more aware. Also you want to go to key bindings and bind about face and bind look behind because those will allow you to do some of the tricks as well and be more aware of your surroundings. The first skill is Trick Shot, which is a projectile that bounces up to three times between targets and does 25% more damage to poison foes. It has a pretty slow uh, projectile arc, so it's harder to hit at further ranges, but at closer ranges it is a very strong tool. It has a 20% chance to trigger a projectile finisher, which means it's not very reliable, but if it does trigger the projectile finisher, it will do the uh, finisher effect on every bounce of the skill. And if you notice, the bounce targeting tends to prioritize depending on your positioning as well as the positioning of the targets to the original target. So if you are further away from the original target, the bounce will tend to go uh, toward the way that the momentum of the arrow is going. But the closer you are to the target, the, the more the arrow tends to bounce towards you. Surprise Shot is the sneak attack for Shortbow, which means when you're in stealth, your one skill becomes this. It's a projectile just like Trick Shot, except it doesn't bounce and it does a two second immobilize. And it's a 100% projectile finisher. So if you do this in a blinding powder or a black powder, then it will, it will blind your target. Also, it will put poison on your target if you have the panic strike trait and one thing to note is that all sneak attacks have a one second internal cooldown with themselves so you can't use a sneak attack and miss and then use it right after but because surprise shot has a a trajectory and it takes time for you for the skill to reveal you 
you can actually precast a surprise shot and then swap weapons and then do a, a steel backstab right into it which isn't isn't too useful but you can still in some situations make use of that cluster bomb is a ground targeted aoe which does one bleed and can be detonated for four bleeds and a little bit more damage as well and this is pretty good for removing aegis or blind because of how many times it can hit when it detonates also it does a combo finisher blast if you don't detonate it but it won't do that combo finisher blast when you do detonate it so you have to make some choices whether you want the combo to be uh, finished or to get the added damage and bleeds also note how mobile I can be while casting the skill because the the cluster bomb is independent of my character once it's shot off so I can be dodging or you know doing any other skill while detonating the cluster bomb because the cluster bomb has its own mind sort of until I, I detonate it it's it's sort of set off on its own and I can also cast it while I'm looking behind me so it allows me to easily position myself while kiting uh, this is really important because you move faster while you're moving forward you'll actually move slower if you move to the side or backwards so if you shoot behind you while running in the opposite direction you can kite someone as quickly as possible while also putting pressure back on them also because cluster bomb is a slow moving arcing projectile it can be used to shoot over obstacles that would otherwise line of sight you disabling shot is a 100 percent projectile finisher that also cripples the target and gives you an evade frame at the same time most people will use this skill as an evade frame and because of how the initiative system works you can sort of chain multiple evades in a row without using any of your actual dodges and it's important to know that while you can chain these dodges there is a vulnerability frame which means you can be hit in between the dodges and that vulnerability frame is after you land from the leap and your character you'll see does like a double step and then you regain control of your character so you're in that in that time you're vulnerable because you can't dodge or sort of react in any way and you're you're essentially vulnerable but there is one way to counteract that is by weapon swapping and that will cancel the animation after cast of the disabling shot and allow you to use a dodge. Choking gas is a ground targeted projectile that leaves a poison field on the ground and it can be cast in any direction just like cluster bomb but it is unblockable which not only means that you can hit someone with it while they're blocking but also that projectiles which are unblockable can't be reflected if choking gas ticks on a target with at least five poison stacks on them, it will daze each individual target for half a second. And this has an internal cooldown of once per choking gas. And there are some ways to get those poison stacks by yourself. For example, steel, if you have deadly arts, will give you two stacks of poison. If you proc Panic Strike, that'll give you another two stacks. And then the Choking Gas itself can also give two to three stacks. And you know you can get lucky with some 20% projectile finishers from your trick shot. Infiltrator's Arrow is another projectile which can be cast regardless of the direction that you're facing. 
but it is a 900 range projectile which teleports you to the location that your projectile ends in and will blind in the area. What is different about Infiltrator's Arrow than a normal 900 range port is that it is a projectile and is affected by line of sight and blocks and range. So in order to maximize your Infiltrator's Arrow distance every time, you want to have a setting enabled called lock ground target at maximum range and that will allow you to get the maximum distance on your infiltrator's arrow most of the time. Another thing that you want to do is jump right as you're casting infiltrator's arrow because it'll help you line of sight the arrow as far as possible if you're going say up a slope or if there's some terrain in the way. Infiltrator's arrow can be seen while you're in stealth, so try not to use it if you're trying to sneak around. But also, you can use this to your advantage by having people overcommit to a direction they think you're going, but you're in fact stealth and going in a different direction. While Infiltrator arrow is a really strong projectile skill, it is a projectile which means it can be reflected and it can be blocked by a character who jumps in front of the arrow and, while blocking. So one thing that you can do to combat this is to cast Basilisk Venom, which makes your next attack unblockable. And say if you're in a swirling winds in the middle of a team fight and you really need to get out of there, you're gonna be stuck in there because you can't infiltrator's arrow out because your projectile will be blocked. So Putting on Basilisk Venom will make your Infiltrator Arrow unblockable and it'll go through the Swirling Winds and it won't use up the Basilisk Charge, even if you hit something with the Blind Effect from your Infiltrator's Arrow. Another thing you can do is use the About Face Keybind with Disabling Shot. If you don't have any dodges, this will allow you, if you don't have a target, to dodge in the direction that you want to go rather than use up a dodge and you can do this to get through marks or dragon hunter traps and another thing you can do is precast an infiltrator's arrow and because there's a delay between the casting of the arrow and the porting you can dodge or disabling shot right before you port and you'll be in the evade frame when you port and you will dodge the mark or trap. Okay, so in a real situation, I'm pushing into a node with a teammate and I should always stealth my teammate. So I put down my black powder and I blast it with short bow too. Now my target is kiting. So this is a fresh air alley and I don't want to get instantly one-shotted. So I'm playing pretty safe. I stealth up again and I realize that he's standing in a spot where I can't steal. If I try to stand on the same spot as him, I will die. So what I do is, I since he has swirling winds up, I use choking gas and then I go behind the pole because I know that all of his attacks require line of sight, whereas cluster bomb doesn't require line of sight because it's an arcing projectile. And eventually that pressures him off of the no port spot. And at that point I can swap to my dagger pistol, which is a more aggressive weapon and can allow me to get the kill now that he's no longer able to, to camp that spot. In this clip, my team is losing the map, so I'm looking for a decap to relieve some of the pressure to allow them to regroup. I notice that someone is far, so I try to get a kill in Rhodes. And this NG is running a build that does a lot more damage in melee range than me, so I don't go in for too long. And as soon as I pop one of his cooldowns, I immediately stealth and shadow step into infiltrated for the decap because I know that the warrior is going for beast. Now that he's on the node, I can pressure him by using a cluster bomb and he drops his uh, reflect field so I go in with a melee attack. 
I realize that he's a little bit out of cooldowns, so I try to maintain as much pressure as I can with Shortbow while also not getting globaled by him being in stealth. And I just keep kiting with Shortbow and keeping cluster bombs put in his face as he presses towards me. So I used all of my initiative to escape using mobility of the infiltrator's arrow. So using that distance, I pull some energy and stealth up. And now I know that his cooldowns are down so I can take advantage of him while my cooldowns are up for the most part. So basically I won this fight by kiting with Shortbow during the moments where he was invulnerable or when he had better trades available to him. And that's it. So if there are any questions regarding the thief Sharpo, then you can leave a comment below and you can even suggest another topic that I can cover next and subscribe so that you can see that next video. And if you're wondering how I use the Sharpo in my everyday gameplay, you can check out my live stream, which is also in the description below.